In today's video, we are refilling this activity kit I made last month for my kids with new things for this month. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet. This was last month's kit and it's been used big time. So I need to refill it with some new ideas so that you can have some inspiration too on some things that you can put in your activity kids for your kids. I have a whole bunch of ideas already done for you in my Amazon store. So if you wanna go over there and check it out, I'll put a link down below and you can see all the ideas I've done from past videos, especially if you have younger kids, cause I've been doing these videos for a while and my kids have grown up with them. So I have all kinds of ideas for all ages there. There's also a playlist you can check out too. I encourage you to go look at past videos because a lot of ideas in those videos are still good. So let's get on to how we're refilling this one. Let's get started. For these videos, we do a really quick recap of what was in here and what worked and what didn't work. Oh my goodness, everything's falling out. As you can see, it was well used. So just to kind of clear it out a little bit, um, we have these mini Mattel card games from the dollar store. You saw it in my Dollar Tree. Shop with me in my haul. Big hit, actually. There's two of them here. Dose Go, we didn't quite get to Dose Go yet, so I might put that back in there. We did try Lowdown, and that was actually a really good game. So I do recommend this one, even in the larger version too. So these were a hit. We had the Surf Up Surfers game. This is from Dollar Tree 2. It's just a little trivia game and they did look at it. But I also want to put this away for when we do some traveling this summer. I think that would be a good hit. I want to keep these aside and pull them back probably in like a month or so for spring break. Then we had some books. Where's Waldo books? These are from a larger book box and they pulled these out periodically. Just whenever they had a minute, they just wanted to look at the pictures and check them out. Big hit. So I only took two out of the whole set. So we have more even to look at as well. So definitely like these. Like I said, these are great for visual perception, um, kind of like tracking things. So my daughter who is working on this skill, this is really beneficial for her. So definitely loved these Where's Waldo books. They're classics, oldies, but goodies, right? We like those. And then we also had this multiplication flip flap, fun flap. <laughs> Can I say that right? Fun flap facts. And inside were these little uh, printables uh, that you could do for multiplication facts. So we printed some out and we had some extras here, but these were all over the house for some, <laughs> for some time. But you make them into those, you know, little fortune or some people call them cootie catchers and you do math problems to find the answers. I highly recommend them. I, I'm not sure if the book is still in print, but it's really great because you can just print them out and do like a photocopy of them like we did. And then you can do them multiple times over and over again. Since we're doing multiplication facts, we also had the wrap up keys in here too for some extra practice. My third grader, she just needs to get that practice in. So that's why we have that in there. So she used that. The fidgets, oh my goodness. The fidgets were out all of the time. This time I put in the zipper bracelet ones from the dollar store. Also seeing these at the Target dollar section. Big hit on these. They come three to a pack. Also put them in Amazon store, I think. And maybe I should do that again. This fidget here, which is a stretchy one. Big hit. And then this snap circuit set. Huge hit. My third grader pulled this out several times to do some of the activities in here. So this is just one of the most amazing kits I've ever had. And my kids loved and adored it. And they had forgotten about it. And I brought it back out and they loved it. So definitely Definitely, definitely this one worked they loved it. And then also I added this. This was not in my video. I added this because they're learning about electronics and stuff like this. So I brought out this book, The Magic Schoolhouse Bus. Actually, I bought it and added it to their activity kit because they were loving the circuit so much. So I took an opportunity because it was kind of child led by the book so they can kind of bridge some gaps about what's going on. This was not in my video, but I'm going to link it down below in case you watched that last video because this would be good to go along with it too. All right. So that means we have an empty box and we have have to fill it up with some things for Christmas or Valentine's Day? I'm not even sure anymore. I think it was Christmas. My girls got these art kits. This is from Target, the Mondo Llama line. Butterfly, dinosaur, they come with the paints. This one has like little jewels. This one has glitter glue and some eyes on it. And you just basically paint your own wooden animal. And I, I feel like they still have these at Target and they have them in all kinds of different styles. We haven't gotten to them yet. This is a Christmas gift that we still have that was given to us by family members that we haven't done yet. So in order to encourage them or to remind them that these exist, I'm going to put them in the activity kit. I usually like to have something artsy in there and then it's taking up a lot of room, but once they get those kids 
open and out, then we'll be good. As far as space goes in our activity kits, if you all know me, I usually have a rule that says if it doesn't fit in there, it doesn't go in. So um, <laughs> they better use those pretty quick. This is the multiplication bubble popper. And this was in my last video about how to use fidgets for learning. I've showed you once where, where they were like the 100 board. They had bubble pops from one to 100 or one to 120. This is similar because it has all of the numbers printed on here, but it also is multiplication. So you can do math problems. It's very, very similar to what we would see on a Montessori multiplication board. I demoed the whole thing for you and all the different ways you could use it, but the main way would be, okay, three times, or sorry, four times, five and then you'd find where they t they meet and that would be your answer 20 and they can pop all the bubbles they can do erase i mean there's so many different ways that video i'll have to put it up there in the corner so you can watch it on what to do with this little popper because it's so affordable and um such a fun trendy thing right now i'm going to put that in there because like i said we're still working on multiplication this would be more of a check your answer right now for us because they just need to have something there to kind of reinforce all of those multiplication facts as you and as you can see i am addicted to popping all of these bubbles. I'm all about as many different things that we can use for multiplication that we can find because it just makes learning multiplication that much more fun. In that same fidget video, I showed you this, which is a building blocks game. They haven't gotten to play with this yet because I had it for my video, but there is a little balance board. Dump it all out for you again. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you all the details because I did in that video. There's this balance board and then there's these game cards that will tell you to put on the pieces. And so for my kids, they're gonna actually put the pieces on here one by one as a game so they can learn about balance and then also have their fidgets with it too. It's super cool. And there's so many different things that you can do with it. I showed you all in that video. They haven't been able to get their hands on this game yet because I was saving it to show you guys first, but I always like to put a game in their activity kits that they can do together. If you guys don't already know, I have two younger ones. I actually have three kids, but the two younger ones that live with me are ages eight and 10. And my oldest, she's not really into the games being that she's quite a bit older and doesn't live at home anymore. And I'm going to link all this um, down below to the ones from Amazon so you can go and find it. As you can see, my box is getting filled, but these are going to be gone soon. So we'll have more room as the days go by. I do like to put sensory things. So our bubble popper here is a sensory item, but this is also something I, um, I found at Dollar Tree and it's called the Maze Labyrinth. And they do come in different styles. I said in my video when I showed my haul that I wasn't sure if they came in different styles because my store only had one. But when I went back, I saw that they had a couple different styles. This one is the fish theme. And so basically, one, I love that there's two handles on here, so it can be kind of a two-handed thing. Um, visual tracking, and then also fine motor hand-eye coordination. And there's little marbles in here, and you get them through the maze from start to finish, two different paths you can go. And this one is gonna be great. I used to have a maze from Dollar Tree before, and there was holes in it, so they'd go in the bottom, so it was a lot more challenging. This one doesn't have holes in the board, so you definitely have to get to places much easier, get to the end. I'm kind of mesmerized by by this. I might have to finish this before I go on. There, I got one there. I don't have two of these. Usually I get one for each of them, but I have a feeling my older 10-year-old might not be as interested as my eight-year-old, so I'm not too worried about it. This is called a Fraction War, and I haven't played with this yet with my kids. So it's just like war, like you'd play with card games, but with fractions. And so each card has a fraction and you basically, you know, compete with the other player. And so because my third grader is learning fractions, I thought it might be a good thing to pull this out. And it's basically you're comparing fractions, you know, which one's bigger than the other. And I put this in a video. It was, it was a video about fractions, I think. And I had so many ideas in that video about how to introduce fractions, work on fractions, help um, supplementing with them. So I have a video and that goes up there. If I forget about these videos, you guys have to remind me. Sometimes I forget to put the links up, but I put the picture up. I just don't put the link up. So you guys have to remind me if I don't. I've been pretty good about it lately. So lots of ideas about fractions and this is one of them in there and it was so affordable too. So we're gonna put this in here because they haven't tried it yet and I thought it might be really, really good one for them to try. And because it's a little bit more challenging because it is fractions and fractions are kind of new to my, my uh, now third grader, I think I'm gonna put back in the Uno Dose. This is the mini game from Dollar Tree, just because I know it's a game that they can pick up fast. So I feel like she might get frustrated with this one and not want to play it as much. So I kind of want to put something that I know she definitely will like in there too. And we didn't get to it last time, so that will work. Did you guys watch my video about spring activities? <laughs> We are so excited about the butterflies. It's from Lakeshore. There's a whole butterfly nursery that we did. And if you're watching this video when I posted it, this video today, 
and it's posted today, then that giveaway is still open. So you can go and win a gift card to Lakeshore. So go watch that video. But if not, it's still a good thing to have. And so we're going to be getting butterflies and we're going to be, uh, actually we're going to be getting caterpillars and they're going to turn into butterflies. So I wanted to pull out my butterfly books. These have been on our bookshelf for, I, I don't know, several years and they haven't uh, looked at them in a long time. This one is probably a little bit on the younger side, but I'm okay with it. Say that because it's got like little flaps inside, you know, it's like a little flap book, but there's still a lot of good information in here. And I, I don't think it's too off level. So that's why I'm going to include it, but it's talking about the cycle life cycle of a butterfly. So this is how does a butterfly go? It's from DK. I'll link this one down below. And then this other one is the cat in the hat learning library. Oh, my butterfly. And you know, this series is actually really, really good if you've never checked it out before. So it goes kind of in a story format, but then it talks about the um, life cycle of the butterfly in a story format. So they go on an adventure and they learn about butterflies as they go through. And this one is probably a little younger than this one, but still it was on our bookshelf. So I thought I'd pull it out. It might be a simple thing for them to do. It's got a little glossary in the end, that kind of thing, because we're getting the butterflies. We're going to be having the butterflies. And because we're having the butterflies, so I got the two books, I brought out my Safari LTD um, figures, so figurines, the butterfly life cycle set. So the life cycle set comes with all of the pieces that go in the life cycle. So I just want them to be familiar with what we're looking at when our caterpillars come and and when we're um, discovering the butterflies. But I just have to mention that they're amazing. If I find them on Amazon, I'll have to put a link on there too. I printed out this little paper here that has the life cycles on them from their website. So what I did is just like copied the picture that they had that illustrated it and they're labeled on here each part so my kids can become familiar with them. Very excited about these butterflies as you can tell that we're gonna be coming. So watch my Instagram because I'm gonna try and take you along in that process of our little caterpillars too. So so we have the figurines, we have our little card with the labels, and then we have our books to go along with it. Very excited about that. We are super full, you guys, but I wanted to add one thing, just one thing. This was a game that I showed, I would have to say it was one of the very first games I ever showed on the Purple Alphabet, and the company sent it to me to review from Educational Insights, and it's called Riddle Creek. Riddle Cube. I'm not even sure if it still exists, to be honest with you. I will look it up. If I can find it, I will put it down below because it's, it would be really great. This has been pushed to the back of a closet for years. And so my kids, they don't even know that it exists. So inside comes with these little figures. And the reason why I thought of it is because of my fidget video, because there was a fidget in there that was very similar to this. And I remember this, we had this game. So I went to find it. There's a couple of these, so you can have multiple players. So every player will get one. There's a time there's instructions. So inside here, there's a whole bunch of cards. There's also some questions in here, I think. Um, I can't remember exactly what you're supposed to do with those questions. But then there's all these different cards and you're supposed to replicate the shape on the card. Can I do this one? No, I'm not very good at this. So I see a square and then I see Ah, oh, there we go. So see, you just kind of manipulate the, the um, as they go in so many different directions too, which makes it even more challenging. I think this might've been too challenging for my kids to begin with. But I think now that they're eight and 10, they'd be able to do it. Ages eight to adult. This is not gonna fit in here, just barely, maybe over here in the corner, but I just had to include it. So here we go. This is our activity kit for this month. We have art, we have books, we have games, we have sensory fidgets, and we have life cycles. Very excited about this month's activity kit. If you want some more ideas for activity kits, I'm gonna put up a video up here on the screen so you can go and check out some more ideas that I've done before in the past. I'll see you over there next. Click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.